Okay, so our first, uh, our first uh, actual, so thanks you guys, that's helpful. If you're still working on that, go ahead and finish that up, keep cranking on that. Um, but our first um, example of a, of a you know, management issue we can start to begin to get our, our teeth into um, is this. So now I've picked one that's specifically not here in Southern California, so we can sort of look at it with a bit more objective eyes as we first start this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, you all are gonna help us uh, uh, collect some data, and then once you've done that, um, on next class we're going to get together and look at um, your data that you collected compared to previous year's students that have collected data in the same same industry. Okay, so let's talk about the issue. Is it, uh, question? Sorry, question so far. Is all this stuff making sense? Any questions about the inclusionary or imaginary and that kind of stuff? Okay, cool. All right, so uh, let's talk about um, uh, ecotourism, which is an important aspect of the coast as with many of our areas. And um, you know, for clarity, ecotourism is, is a subset of tourism. Tourism is, is one of the largest industries on the planet, right? It could take a lot of different forms. It could take people going to the theater. It could take people going to national parks. It could take you know, all, all different kinds of flavors. In this case, we're talking about the subset that is ecotourism, the subset of tourism where people are going to a view or experience some aspect of nature or a natural phenomenon. In this case, in this case, we're talking about um, uh, manta rays. So these are a cartilaginous fish. This is um, a, in the same family as sharks and rays and that kind of stuff. There are two uh, major uh, species here, um, but both of them essentially behave the same. So these are giant, uh, sometimes people have called, like the, the old, one of the old names was devilfish because people thought they maybe looked a little scary or something. Um, but really, really cool critter. So these are uh, wide, potentially wide ranging species. Um, and like many of our larger critters, gorillas, sperm whales, after we get to a certain size, it's hard to meet our caloric intakes. And so a lot of our largest animals on the planet are not carnivores or you know, active predators like we're thinking of them. They're rather typically herbivores or grazers or filter feeders. And so that's the case with um, this, uh, this species, this manta ray. And so what these manta rays are doing is, is they're moving through the water column and they are filter feeding. So they're getting, even though they're a big, you know, large individual, they're getting their caloric needs, their energy requirements met by, um, by grabbing little, you know, plankton out of the water column. So that's great, but that does mean, so that means they can meet their energy, energetic requirements, but it also means they have to be feeding a lot of the time, right? So gorillas always eating, you know, uh, um, uh, blue whales always filter feeding, filter feeding, filter feeding. I, did I say sperm whale before? I shouldn't have said sperm whale. I should have said, should have said blue whale. Um, yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> edit that, edit that out. Um, okay, so um, now how these guys are gonna do this filter feeding is they're gonna be swimming all the time and they're gonna intake water over their gills and they're gonna use those gills or gill rakers to uh, pull out um, those little, you know, baby shrimp or, or little phytoplankton or whoever it is, and then they essentially ingest that, um, that stuff that they've gotten. So, so they're pretty cool. They're neat. Um, they, and in recent decades, seeing these crazy cool critters has become um, a, a, a thing. It's become a thing. Um, they're visually very impressive to look at. They're really cool. And they, they, they don't bite you, right? They don't have big sharp teeth that might accidentally tear into you or, or what have you. So these are um, some examples of major uh, manta ray places around the world that you could go as a tourist and go pay money and, and, and go experience these critters up close. Um, we're gonna focus on the area that is in the US, the, 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 the most important area in the US, which is in, in Hawaii, and um, particularly off the Kona coast of the Big Island of Hawaii. And so um, now manta rays are all around, but there are certain aspects of 
the local environment that tend to aggregate them or concentrate them. And so, um, and so this is what it looks like if you were on one of these Manta dives um, just off the Kona coast. Um, very shallow water. You know, the water is uh, uh, shallower than, well, it's about, it's about from where you are right now down to the ground floor, right? So it's pretty shallow um, <clears throat> for the most part and very close uh, inland. So, so the depth of the water is, is very shallow, very close to the, to the air. And from the land, it's very close to the land. This is what a typical night can look like. So packed with boats. So if I look right here, I see, so there's, in, there's, there's these guys on this boat. So here's one, here's some people floating on a, on a surfboard with a light underneath it. Here's another group of people. Here's another boat. 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 Um, right, and just, it's all around. Uh, and here's what it looks like in practice. if you guys are going to be able to see that. I wonder where my multimedia. Okay. All right. Take a pause. You guys uh, keep working on your sheet. Let me figure out why this sound isn't working. Hold on. There's something about my memory. Hold on. Hold on. Let's stop. So everything you're looking at is a ship that has a group of people underneath them. So... Okay. So... So that was just a random night, and that was uh, this is that video and this video were from uh, back when we had more money, and I took you guys, I took our coastal management class to uh, the Big Island for a short trip, um, and this is a, a conversation with um, the gentleman who was then head of the tourist uh, agency on, on this part of Hawaii, and um, he's just going to talk for five minutes about just the history of um, manta ray ecotourism in this specific location on this specific island. Okay. So it started in the 80s? Because I don't remember it. Hmm. Okay. So let me, let me translate what he was saying. So, um, so this was... Uh, this is not an old industry, right? So it didn't really get going till 2000, 2005. So we're talking, you know, 20-ish years. This is not centuries and centuries of stuff. Um, and it used to just be, as with many of these things that are attractive to tourists around the world, it just used to be part of the culture. It just used to be part of the stuff we did. Nobody paid for it or just part of the landscape. And then as people um, figured out they could monetize that, things have changed. What's going on here is the manta rays are plankton feeders, right? And it turns out that the plankton that they're feeding on um, at night, for example, so we'll talk about this later, but essentially one of the, the largest, my, actually the largest daily migrations on the planet happens every single day across all of our oceans. So as the sun goes down, critters that um, might get eaten in the shallow waters are down deeper in the ocean. Then as the sun goes down, those critters come up into the shallow areas and then can feed on some of the productivity. For example, the phytoplankton, let's say, that are living in the sunlit areas. And so that daily migration is, is an important thing. Um, uh, related to that, a lot of those, um, uh, one of a common phenomenon we see with a lot of marine creatures uh, that move around, particularly things that have different behaviors in the daytime versus the nighttime, is called a phototaxis or, or positively phototaxic, meaning that they, they go towards the light. And so what's go, what, what um, that gentleman was talking about was when his buddies were here back in the day, they'd go down to the pier and there would be a, a, a street lamp, a light pointing, you know, on the dock and then a little bit of that water also shone into the water, a little bit of that light also shone into the water, they would jump in because the manta rays figured out that in that light, these phytoplankton kind of, or, or, or plankton I should say, go up and hang out in this light and then, oh my God, they're concentrated. So instead of being just distributed across everywhere, now they're, they're like, come to me, come to me, come to me. So the manta rays are like, hey, light means food, right? And so they've kind of figured this out. And so as this has developed, 
in the last couple decades as people have started to figure, oh, hey, this is something we can do. What folks have done is they've gone off and they've brought their own lights. So what we're looking at here is a portable light array, portable LED array. And in this case, this one we're looking at in the foreground is floating on top of the water, has floats. So it's just shooting light straight down. Um, others that we can't quite see, others might be laid on the bottom of the sand, right? Or, or attached to a vessel. But the point is throwing light into the water, making things come to us. And then the manta rays like, oh my gosh. And, and, and now the manta rays are so, so um, accustomed to this when they hear the boats coming up, you know, the, the, the hum of the engines, they start to, oh my God, hey, cool. Um, now, a couple of really interesting aspects of this. Uh, tourism. Now you guys may, may well have not been to, to Kona or whatever. We're talking, this is about a 10 minute, you know, maybe if you're going slow, 15 minute ride from the harbor. So this is not hours and hours away. This is not get on the boat, sit on the boat for four hours while we traverse to somewhere else. This is right out of the harbor, right? For this to work, it needs to be dark. So what the tour operators can do is we can say, okay, cool. Hey, show up at sunset, right? When it's still light out, so we can orient our passengers to be, or you know, tourists to be safe, show them PFDs, all that, whatever we need to do to make them safe. And then when it's all light and nice out and everybody can see everything, and then we start to motor out just as the sun is starting to sit. So you, you also get to see a really pretty, you know, tropical sunset, you know, so that's cool. Motor over, stop, you know, a few minutes, uh, pop down, uh, and drop your anchor or tie up, whatever the case may be. Put your stuff out, orient people, sun's going down a little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit, still a little bit light so people can still see stuff. So people that are maybe not used to the ocean, it's not, they're out, not out in the middle 3 a.m., everything's pitch black. And as this is going on, then we deploy the lights, the lights go out, and there's three different, potentially three different levels here. So there's scuba divers put on their tank, boom, boom, go drop in the water. Now this is very shallow, like I said, it's like, I don't know, 20 feet deep or so. So if you don't, if you're not a scuba diver, suffice it to say, the deeper you go, the more oxygen you, you tend to breathe. And the more swimming you do, the more active you are, the more oxygen you breathe. So you consume your, your reservoir of air more quickly. In this case, you're very shallow and they, sit you, and they have you sit on your knees all around this light. So you're not even swimming around. So even if you're a naive person that just got certified, you're on your honeymoon, you've never scuba dove before, it's not, you're not going to be um, running out of air kind of thing, right? It's not, not that kind of a thing. It's a relaxed, chill vibe. So the scuba diver folks go down and sit on the sand. The people that don't know how to scuba dive but are comfortable in the water, like these folks right here, you put on a snorkel and, and just go and they have everybody hold on to the bar so you know, they can be safe and we can see everybody's, everybody's floating away or whatever. And they're looking straight down. So the folks of the scuba are looking up. You know, they're on their knees looking up as the manta rays swim over them. These folks are looking down as the manta rays swim underneath them. And then for folks that are maybe um, have a physical disability or grandma who can't get in the water or whatever, there are also glass bottom boats. So in some cases, you don't even have to get in the water. And then you, same thing, you just you know, look down and see. So, so it's really cool in that it's, it's everybody. There's an option for just about everybody, right? Your comfort level in the water, your, your physical limitations or whatever, it's, it's all good. Uh, we do this one dive, one, one round, one, you know, 40-ish minutes or so. I mean, it varies, but something like that, right? Finish up. Okay. Everybody's like, oh my God, that was the neatest thing in the world. Oh my God. Da, 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 da. Right? Take a picture of them so you can sell pictures to them when they get back to the dock and all kinds of stuff. Get back in the boat, rinse everybody off, give them a little soda or a beer or whatever their, their floats their boat. Brrr, 15 minutes later, you're back at the dock thanking everybody, saying goodbye, and you're back home for dinner, right? So burns relatively little fuel as compared to most sort of operations where you're motoring around for hours. Um, it's very, very easy, very contained, and is accessible to just about everybody. It's like, it's, it's a pretty awesome one. And that's why we have so many businesses that have spun up. And so now the question has become, do we have too many businesses, right? Are we too... Um, Are we two on top of each other here, right? Um, you know, one business doing this, probably not a problem. Two businesses, probably not a problem. Three businesses, but at some point we get to the thing where everybody's kind of on top of each other. So we have to talk about safe anchoring so we're not damaging the reef or causing problems. We're not, we're not having 
silly tourists bump into other tourists and causing problems, safety problems, and all that kind of stuff. So, so with more and more usage comes all of the traditional things about management. We, we need to really pay attention to this and properly manage this resource, right? And so in the case of uh, uh, where they, where they the, this main picture I've been, I've been telling you about, pictures were taken, it's just off here. So just off this uh, fancy resort um, on, on the big island. And you know they have all this sort of interpretive signs and all this kind of stuff, and they've named their restaurant after this, and it's you know it's 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 what people are now using as a, a source of place, right? As, as a sense of identity, like this is where the manta rays are. Um, and so again, for clarity, this is the Big Island of Hawaii, and this is where we're talking about. So this is this is so there's manta rays all around here, but primarily it's it's right about here in this in this red circle um, where the most tourist action is. Again, that's the closest. Uh, as far as like the tourist harbor, the departure point and everything. So it just makes uh, a whole lot of uh, convenient sense. And so um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look and see what's going on with this business, with these businesses, right? So we have a couple questions. One thing we're trying to ask is how much revenue is, is being made here? Are these people millionaires? Are these people billionaires? Are these people barely scraping by? You know, what's going on? How many people are, are engaged, you know, potentially theoretically engaged with this? How many tourists are we talking about here? So, so these are the kind of questions we want to start if we're going to start to regulate uh, an industry or, a, or an activity. We first want to know, you know, put our arms around it. How many people are here? How often do they come? What's, what's the, is it, is it uh, scuba diving? Is it snorkeling? You know, what's, what's the dealio? What's going on? So that's what you guys are going to help us with. So one of the questions is how much is going on? And so you're going to look at four businesses. So I've assigned everybody four businesses and I have all the contact info and stuff for you there. And you're just going to go on the web. A lot of it, um, sometimes even all of it, you can get off the web. And then whatever you can't get on the web, you can give them a quick phone call and just say, hey, you guys, just, just want to ask if there's availability. And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do the mental exercise. And we've been doing this for several years where let's, so we're going to be, um, Imagine that we're on the big island or we're going there next week, right? And we're planning our vacation. And so we're just like, hey, I just want to see what the options are. How much does your, is your business charge? Uh, you know, is there, is there availability? All that kind of stuff, right? So we're, we're trying to model as if we are a tourist and trying to engage with this industry in the next week or so. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's take a look at our data sheet. Just, just uh, to reiterate, when we do these shared data sheets, if you guys are confused as to how to fill them out, look at the top one or two or three lines. There's always some examples I usually put in, right? So, so you can see I did it or a previous student did it. So if you're not sure how, like, if you, what you should put in a cell or what it would look like, go ahead and always look at the default to looking at the, the top line or the top couple lines. Okay, so here we go. Just like before, everybody has some assigned, assigned places. Um, and then there's a website. Uh, now, this is from, I just copied the contact info from last year. So it is possible that some of these businesses have gone out of business that aren't there anymore or have changed their website something. If you find that's the case, update it, right? So if you find that this website doesn't work anymore or whatever, update it. If the business closed, talk to me and we'll like make sure we, we don't keep trying to monitor this, this thing. Okay, so, um, so this stuff is all here for you. This is the website. Uh, sorry, firstly, this is the name of the, name of the place. And then it's the website or the phone contact. And then is it in this greater Kona region? And for all the ones you guys are doing, the answer is yes. There's a, sometimes when, when class is really large, we run out of businesses. So we actually survey some other locations, but, but you guys don't need to do that. So all the stuff we'll be doing um, is in the um, you know, Kona Kalua area. Um, and so again, these are all filled out for you. Okay, this is, now this is when you guys are good, this is the part you guys are gonna start filling out. So you're gonna look at the availability of manta ray uh, uh, opportunities next week. Okay, so the week of next week. So most of these websites now, because they're, they're so tourist oriented, they have, they have calendars on there. Well, Then you, then I must have, the, the. okay, hold on, let me, let me, let me, so I, I, I might be the old link from last year's class, hold on, let me just, uh, I'll, I'll reshare that, give me a sec. Oh, no, we got it now. Okay, 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 cool. All right, okay, so, so first you're going to look, and, and again, here's your options, none, some, 
a little, or lots, some, little, or none. And again, that's just looking over, and you'll see when you start to go there, most of these have calendar uh, things. So you can, I want to book it on something. And they'll, they'll have days that are grayed out if it's not available, right? So, so again, what, what's our imagination? Our imagination is we're there with our family. We want to go on a manta ray dive next week. Can we go? Okay. Uh, and then, and so there's a couple different versions. So they'll, they'll, they'll have snorkel opportunities and scuba opportunities. Some of them will only have one or the other. Some will have both. And you just want to know what the price is. Okay, so how much does it cost? Um, and then how, how long is it? This will, again, most of the stuff you're going to find on the website, right? They're going to say, oh, it's you know, planned for an hour or an hour and a half or whatever the heck it is. Um, th this one here is, uh, isn't always obvious. So, um, but I've left the numbers in from last year because usually they don't change their boats that much, but you want to double check just, just, just to sort of see. But this is in class next week? Uh, we'll, 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 I'll, have, I'll have you guys take a, first take a stab right now so you can try it, so okay. you can get a sense of it after I finish. Okay, so we do that. And then, um, and then uh, we'd like to, uh, we might, yeah, I mean, I don't know. We might just bail on this. This is what we were doing the last couple years with COVID, but it, I don't know if it's worth continuing to do that. Um, uh, some of them have stopped. So some of them, so now that school's back in session, the, so a lot, not all, but a lot of the Hawaii tourism is family-based. And so once um, kids, you know, once school's out, a lot of people go on vacation. And then when school goes back in session, like the, the intensity of tourism drops off. So some of them have just said, oh, hey, once school starts, so you might find some of them that don't have anything. It's all closed. There, there is no uh, uh, options next week, right? And that's, so that's possible, right? In fact, probably several of them will be that way. And so that just says, you know, are they, are, do, are, do they have anything going on? So one is just like, so one of the first questions is, hey, maybe they're booked. Maybe everybody and their brother is, and I can't get a slot. The other is that they just aren't taking anybody out. And so that, that's what this is meant to capture. Okay. And then, and then there's some other things that we can, uh, any notes, any notes that you have, uh, put it in there. And then this is stuff that we'll work on, that, that, that this stuff over here uh, we'll work on as a group once we get this first stuff. But what we need is we need to know the availability and we need to know the, the, pr the current price, right? Because that changes every year or so. Does that make sense? So you're going to fill this out. And then, so the only task for on, with regards to Manta Ray stuff is to fill out your four stuff. So the approach is going to be start with, start with the website and get whatever you can get from the website. And if you can't get something from the website, give them a ring and just say, yeah, I'm just calling to ask about, you know, I'm curious what you're, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Make sense? Okay. No. So you're just going to fill out this stuff that's like F ish through, what is this? Through N. Um, this stuff I will calculate for you guys. So, so the, once it hits, uh, so, so do put in any notes because that notes can, can help us if we have a question, but with the exception of the notes, uh, I'll do the rest on the, uh, to the right to make it ready for you guys so we can all share it as a group. Cool? Yeah. For all the ones I've been assigned, there's already numbers for everything. I should just go and Double check it. Double check it. Okay. Yeah. So, so most of the stuff I've deleted, the, some of the stuff I've left in, but, but um, you should definitely double check. Okay. All right. So let's take a few minutes and you guys uh, start on that and see if it makes sense. Oh, 